I'm really excited for this session. And as part of our usual talk, we will reserve last five minutes for any of the questions you might have as part of this talk. And we will be inviting all of our speakers to address all that uh, questions. So please feel free to drop in your questions on the state channel and all of our speakers will be able to address them. Hello, Shireen. Hello, Lana. Very warm welcome. Hi, Diraj. Hello, Diraj. Hi. So, I'll, so uh, the remaining speakers will be joining in as well. And I will be leaving the stage so that they can come in. And you can also start sharing your screen. Good luck and really looking forward to your session. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Just bear with us. The other speakers are joining. Hi, testing, testing. Okay, we got you, Gita. We are live, Gita. Can you hear us? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All good. Okay, bear with us. <laughs> We'll be starting soon. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. fantastic. All ready to go. Okay. Good afternoon, fellow API enthusiasts. Insurance Australia Group is the largest general insurance company in Australia and New Zealand with offices across seven cities. We sell insurance products under brands like NRMA, CGU, State and AMI. We make our customers' world a safer place, insuring and protecting our customers' assets like car, motorcycle, home, boat and caravan. My name is Lana Morrison. I'm the API product owner in Technology Integration Services at IAG. With me today is Shirin Akbas, Acting Executive Manager, Integration Services, Sathya Anantharajan, API Delivery Manager and Scrum Master, Masangi Vijay Shankar, DevOps Engineer, and Geetha Jothalingam, Senior Business Analyst. Today, I'll be playing the role of interviewer. I'm channeling Oprah, Barbara Walters, maybe a little bit of Joan Rivers. Today, we'll be sharing with you our API journey to deliver an insurance ecosystem. IOG has been providing insurance services in Australia for almost 160 years, almost as long as Melbourne's current lockdown. <laughs> During that time, the insurance ecosystem has become large and complex. We have multiple policy systems, many brands and product variants across Australia and New Zealand, several pricing engines, and hundreds of policy wordings. It's not surprising then that simplification became a key pillar of IAG's overarching strategy. As API pioneers at IAG, our strategy was to optimize our core insurance business while creating future growth opportunities. So Shirin, how did IAG's API journey start? Thanks, Lana. I can give a bit of background on how we started our API journey. It was almost four years ago. Back then, we were a group of Java developers finishing a long run project. We were looking for opportunities to build software together. As, as a team, we enjoyed working together. So we wanted to make a difference. So we focused our attention on emerging technologies. We visited some other companies, some startups to understand their practices. We attended conferences, talked with specialists in the industry. We just needed a purpose at that time within our organization. What can we build so that it helps IAG? 
the fact that IAG's complex ecosystem had to be simplified was the answer to our question at that time. So as we were keen to experiment new technologies, we showed interest in API-first approach, microservices, and mainly open source. API's first thinking was fundamental for changing towards a digital transformation, and it still is. So we were very keen on understanding the underlying principles to, of building secure and modular APIs. We played with open source tooling and technologies, as it was going to give us the flexibility and help us adapt quickly to the rapidly changing technology landscape. And how did you approach your experimentation? Yeah, uh, we started working on a proof of concept, which was an address API. It was for address searching, validation, and geocoding. It was something to try out for us and experiment. However, we didn't have a consumer at that time. So Satya, can you remember how we approached developing our first real API? Thanks, Sharon. Looking back a couple of years now, we didn't have any consumers within our organization initially. We were wondering if the idea of APIs would interest anyone. We knew we had to start somewhere, and after a couple of tries, and luckily enough, things neatly fell in place, and we had our first internal consumer, the NRMA mobile application team. Ta-da! Thanks to them. <laughs> <laughs> So our team, having dealt with SOAP-based legacy APIs, we started thinking about building modern, restful APIs that will meet business objectives, and it can grow and evolve with the business. What we built at that time was nothing fancy or too complicated. There were three retrieve services, basically get calls, that pulls data from the backend system and displays on the front-end application. If you have an NRMA policy, you can even download the uh, NRMA mobile app, and the details that you see are coming from our services that we built at that time. As I said, they were very simple APIs, but the amount of learning we had was amazing. We formed a dev squad. We went the agile way for better and faster collaboration, and we tried various tools right from open API spec, CI CD process, version control, feature toggling, we tried contract testing using packs and many more. And during the course of this time, the team was passionate trying about just about everything. Mistakes and failures were OK, because we learned in every step of our way, and we also uh, got better every time. So finally, our NRMA mobile team liked what we built, mainly because of our customer-centric approach and provided an experience that they were actually after. But then came the question of, where do we deploy our APIs? We were wondering if we need to go and search for our other internal teams to utilize their infrastructure. But we also had a choice to build one ourselves. So this paid way for our own infrastructure and deployment journey. So Matangi, do you want to take us through that? Oh, absolutely, Satya. Those were fun times, right? We were, we were bent on creating something new. We wanted to make a difference. We wanted to create APIs, get acceptance, but we didn't think of where to go next. So when we had to give a thought about what our infrastructure stack will be, okay, what comes to your mind when in COVID times? It is Netflix, right? That's our <laughs> savior today. But that was our savior back then as well with their open source stack. So the open source stack comprising of Eureka, Ribbon, Zool, and Hystrix was perfect for an API and microservices based architecture. It provided capabilities like service discovery, gatekeeping, which were very essential in a multiple APIs working environment. So we started off with Netflix stack, Spring Boot, Cloud Config, Swagger, Java, and some Spring startup packs. And then we progressed to have some Docker and Rancher capabilities. And then we moved on to add some RabbitMQ and asynchronous capabilities between the APIs. And then we progressed towards monitoring and alerting through Prometheus and Grafana and Splunk forwarding. Then worked on our test stack using JUnits, Gatling, and Hoverfly. And of course, Gradle and Bamboo integration. So that's our Lana, the Gradle and Bamboo integration. 
Yes, there it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you think about this tech, Lana? This is great. It it reminds me of a honeycomb from from a beehive, and I, I love that it can be added to in a modular way. That's exactly what we did. We took out the components which didn't work for us, added something which came in new and found we found is ideal. And we deployed, we created this infrastructure stack, which is called as Firefly stack. And this is the backbone for all our APIs till date. And this gives us a kind of a stability to build APIs on top of, and we didn't have to depend on another team for any maintenance or support. And we build and we deploy and we maintain. And we had the freedom to add and remove components. After we got this stack right, the next thing we focused on was something called as API templates. API templates are nothing fancy, just the click of a button generation of APIs. So on just run of a bamboo job, it creates an API bamboo repository, pulls in the code, adds in whatever is the dependencies that you need, creates your bamboo build and deploy jobs, and then yeah, there you go. You've got an API at the click of a button. This was very essential for us because it gives a same structure across the multiple APIs that we create. There are so many developers and we are creating so many APIs in a single day that it was very essential to get the structure right and get the dependencies and you know those components right. And achieving this was a big milestone for us. Wow, my blue thinking hat is just loving this template idea. And it generates at the click of a button. Absolutely amazing. So Shirin, while you proved that APIs worked and were a huge value add to the organization, was an API strategy developed by your team? Yes, uh, definitely, Lana. So initially, we developed a strategy with one of our partners and consulting other teams at IAG then shared our pack through workshops, initiative inceptions, which helped us significantly in designing solutions. So the strategy still today is aiming to get us to a state of API-enabled modular business. Our strategy talks about API-layered architecture, how we design and build to common standards and guidelines. And yes, we needed governance, but wanted to emphasize the importance of an API community. So it was very important for us to get people on board, create the community feeling. So going forward, while strengthening our strategy, the work was coming to us from many angles. It was nice to see that we were excited, but needed to quickly respond to the demand. I remember the days we were <laughs> grouping together at one of our meeting rooms and having design sessions for our APIs, and I miss those days. Mm -hmm. So adaptive squads concept helped us, which was described in our strategy. First of all, we didn't want any boundaries in the sense of organizational structure. We formed hybrid squads, small to medium size, including engineers from other teams. We partnered to meet the demand. We ro rotated our people so developers can jump on any API development, irrespective of the domain they are specialized in. It could be policy, claims, or pricing. And one thing we didn't give up was our code quality. We developed our own inter interview API. Whoever comes on board, and still today it's the case, had to go through a two-hour pairing test, which was fun. <laughs> I remember this student. This was my first interaction with the team. Two hours in a room solving an API problem. It was thoroughly, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Matangi. And the feedback from the developers was that you smashed the test. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, Matangi, definitely. So going forward uh, to understand our gaps, we have been through a, an API maturity assessment with our partner. We assessed our own open source Firefly stack and also other uh, integration platforms at IAG. That sounds like a solid strategy for APIs. Now, you, Masangi, and Satya have all mentioned the team. Satya, can you tell us more about the team culture that helped to bring the strategy to life? Yes, of course, Lana. Team culture played a key part, and we can never underestimate that, isn't it? People are our pillars. We had our shared values, beliefs, trust, and respect for each other. We invested on people's desires, what they wanted to do, and what they wanted to learn. 
Growth mindset is part of our culture, and we created various forums such as API Community of Practice, Dev Forums, etc. Even our weekly team meeting had an element of uh, learning and sharing, and we were open for feedbacks too. Another interesting aspect was, was the introduction of DevOps rotation. This enabled team members to work not just on programs or initiatives, but also to understand and maintain our stack. There was a, a, a mindset to shift left, which lift, lifted up our quality tenfold. There was no barriers, nor throwing over the fence. Every member of the team played various interchangeable roles as appropriate. This eliminated silos, had enabled shared understanding, and of course, it helped us in faster delivery too. Yeah, and it's also worth highlighting that the team like to have fun. The fun usually revolves around oh. food, let's be real. Definitely. <laughs> Looking at these photos and remembering the homemade samosas, the birthday cakes, the snack tables. Don't oh, miss the barbecues. Man, miss oh. And yeah, the barbecues. Why oh, did you have to remind of all those, Lana? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Focus, focus. Now, being a large and complex ecosystem, how did you avoid duplication of APIs? Good question, Lana. Though we started small, our footprint grew with an IAG over, over the period of time. We had to create an API catalog for our consumers. This catalog lists all our APIs for a particular business products, such as home, motor, or landlord insurance, for example, and also for particular business functions, be it a court, policy, pricing, claims, etc. We started looking at APIs as a product where consumers can pick and choose what they wanted, which APIs they wanted to integrate with, mostly like an online shopping experience. Also, we saw APIs as not just more than design and implementation, it also had documentations, tech support, terms of use, and various other operational aspects that we need to maintain and evolve with the business. As the ecosystem grew, we felt that certain aspects of the models were repetitive. So we needed to rediscover and reuse efficiently and also improve our ways of working. The need to define a canonical policy model uh, arised, which helped us to eliminate the duplicates and bring in a standardization across all our models. I'll leave it with our BA Geeta, who thrives in and out uh, in the canonical policy model, and she can explain further. This canonical model sounds really interesting, Geeta, and your enthusiasm for it is second to none. Now, please <laughs> tell us, how did we get to this being the preferred model for our APIs? Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> now, that's one journey that's still vivid in my mind. Like Satya <laughs> mentioned, I'm really passionate about this area, and we have come a long way in a very short time. So the journey started when we got a lot of demand for APIs. Everyone around the organization wanted APIs. We needed to build APIs to support many different business functions. And these include things like digital interactions, retrieving customer details, pricing for different products, sending documents to customers, managing claims, etc. many more. So we quickly realized there were similar terminologies and models across these APIs. And we were experiencing standardization issues, such as different structures and different field names for the same thing. Trying to achieve a consistent convention was such a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> now, over many, many design discussions involving copious amounts of coffee and a few drinks, <laughs> as you see here, <laughs> this is our design room. We worked That's through Spanish. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> we worked through many different scenarios. So we evaluated our existing APIs across Australia and New Zealand, as well as industry models. Each model had their purpose, benefits, and complexities. 
After many sessions, we finally arrived at our canonical model, which is basically a standardized data model. And the great thing was we designed it with the collective knowledge in the team. The approach of using a canonical model across these API was supported by our architecture team. Now, the biggest advantage of having canonical models is standardization and consistency in the language used across the APIs. Our entire team became familiar with the model classes and other teams really appreciated the consistency. So it really made it easy for other teams to understand our APIs and we were able to support all these business functions in a really nice and elegant way. Very elegant indeed. <laughs> and I love that this it is. was solved over a few drinks. I'm sure many a debate was had during these brainstorming sessions. Absolutely. <laughs> so Gita, you mentioned that demand was high for APIs and it still is today. Tell us a bit about some of the tools that were born out of the journey. That's right. We had everyone wanting APIs and they wanted them yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we needed to produce contracts for our customers fairly quickly. And we started to brainstorm and investigate ways to produce these contracts in a really scalable way and come up with a couple of innovative tools for that. The first one being the code gen tool. This allows us to design contracts with minimal effort. Now, before this tool, we were creating the contracts out of code, and this took a bit of time. The code gen tool allowed us to produce contracts during analysis or elaboration. The tool utilized canonical model classes from before, and we <laughs> only needed to specify attributes that were needed for that specific API we were able to move into the contract-based approach in a very efficient way. As a result, our customers got our contracts quicker and we were able to use the same contracts in developing the actual API. Okay. That's great to hear that BAs were comfortable using this tool to spin up contracts quickly. Yes, I was very, very happy with that too. So another innovation that came out of the team was the end-to-end -end integration diagram generator. Now that's quite <laughs> that a, fast a long one. one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried saying that 10 times. <laughs> so we needed to see all the components and systems that were part of an API interaction. The diagram generator renders the interconnectivity between APIs and their integrations with internal and external services or systems. So this allows us to visually look at an API and see all the interaction. And this has become a great form of documentation because it helps with onboarding members or troubleshooting the delivery at the delivery level without having to look into the code for all the interactions. So these diagrams were especially useful when we needed to enhance an existing API. And this tool is a useful uh, communication tool for non-technical stakeholders as well. Uh, being able to depict an API in layperson terms can be really, really powerful. Now, Masangi, as the footprint grew, how did the team evolve on the DevOps practices? Yes, Lana, we had to make a lot of changes in our DevOps practices to match the growing needs. Uh, we can take a look at the tools used by the team in the various phases of the DevOps lifecycle. And all these tools, they were not just built overnight. Uh, we can probably have a quick uh, run through of our DevOps journey. So when we started off, we didn't have that much of a DevOps maturity within the team. So we took some conservative choices. We went to Rancher because we knew that other teams were using it and we'll have support. But slowly as we started adding team members, we got more maturity within the team on the DevOps perspective. And we took some calls to do a complete bamboo integration so that it is completely automated and deployed and in dev. And then it's one click deployments to other environments. 
And we had a complete test automation. So as soon as a deployment finishes in an environment, the test suite kicks in to check the sanity of the build. As we started running through these things, we realized that the Rancher version that we were in is not scalable, and we wanted to make a call on where to go next. We had achieved enough stability within the team, so we wanted to go to pure Kubernetes. One reason for choosing it was because we were also on our path to cloud. And having a pure Kubernetes model would mean that we can use the same stack for on-prem and AWS. And it would be just replacing your ingress with a load balancer. And we are there and EK is running. Wow, that is a lot of work. Was this a team effort? Absolutely. Uh, it has to be mentioned that it was not just done by a person or two. And <laughs> we grew as a DevOps team. We understood that it was important for all of us to have that DevOps knowledge. DevOps rotation, which was mentioned by Satya, was one of the key areas in this. All of us wanted to participate in the tech stack and you know, make contribution there. But there are always delivery pressures, which stops us from doing those things. But DevOps rotation, which I personally have benefited from, is a, is a, is a good forum. Because for a stretch of time, you don't work on initiatives and focus only on the tech stack. So you can really think out of the blue box and think what you can do better on your tech stack. And in this way, we've got a kind Definitely. of a maturity. Yes, yes, Shirin. Uh, so this way, we've got a stable maturity across the team members, and all of us can now maintain the stack, the cloud, or the on-prem VMs that we have our um, stack hosted on. Once we achieved this maturity, we started focusing on the security components, like uh, running infrastructure scanning and applying patches, uh, Docker image scanning, uh, scanning your dependencies and jars for vulnerabilities, and we've fixed almost all our critical and high vulnerabilities, and we are working through the list now. Great. Now, you touched on the cloud earlier. Everyone is all about the cloud right now. How are we faring on our path to cloud? Yeah, we are doing well there, and we've been taking strategic decisions on that front, like our Kubernetes call. And uh, what we are doing is we are already having our non-production workloads running in EKS. And uh, simultaneously, we are increasing the cloud knowledge within the team by attending AWS and Cloud Academy workshops. And yes, we are slowly progressing on moving our production workloads into cloud as well. Perfect. Wow, that is quite a journey. Thanks for sharing some of these key moments and highlights. In summary, IAG's API journey can be described as challenging, innovative, and fun. We certainly hope it inspires others. In these unprecedented times, we're all navigating our new normal. <laughs> our culture is still strong. It's a journey that is far from over, and we are all enthusiastic about what the future will bring for us as individuals and as a team. Thanks, Shirin, Satya, Masangi, and Geetha. And thank you, API Dave, for inviting us to share our API journey to build an insurance ecosystem. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Tom. you. Do we have time for questions? I think one of us has to drop off for MC to come in or something like that. I can drop off. I'll drop. We are alone here. <laughs> waiting for, Hi, waiting for wonderful Diraj. Awesome. Hi, so, Diraj. Like I said initially, I really love, and I was just mentioning at the backstage, the all Wonder Woman panel, in fact. So thanks Definitely. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for sharing all such amazing insight. And uh, like I said, uh, although we are out of time, so what we're going to do is if you can drop your contact details on the stage chat, chat channel, and all the relevant people who had questions can reach out to you later on. Sure. And once again, uh, uh, I really appreciate and a big thank you for joining us all together. And I think it was one of the best sessions uh, for API Days Live Australia.
thank you so much thank you very much thanks for giving us a platform thank you all right bye bye